Hi. And uh, this is the Margie and Lisa Show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson, and we're so glad you can join us tonight. We're not sure which camera is lit up, so we're not sure where to look, but I hope we're looking <laughs> at the right one. Glad. No, it's not. You're so, right. camera two, you. we are happy to see you, and we are very lucky to have with us for our first segment, Mary Larson Marlowe, who has been newly elected to planning board. So we are really thank excited you. that you could join us. Thank I know you. you're busy. Thank you. Yeah, and congratulations. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, and this is my co-host. Sorry, did I forget to say that? No, I think I introduced oh, I myself. Got, I, got I think a little we're good. Befuddled by the cameras. Okay. <laughs> so we would love to know what kinds of things you're looking forward to working on on the planning board. Well. Um, I'm excited just to learn more about the town. I mean, yeah. obviously, I've lived here for a while, but um, but I know, of course, my neighborhood or my side of town the best, yes. and yeah. understanding the different needs of different areas in yeah. town is, is going to be important for me. Absolutely. Um, luckily, you know, I know a lot of people around town who live in various places. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and I think know, that's yeah. one of the really cool things about Hopkinton is we have a lake area. Mm -hmm. We have the main road here going in the center of town. We have the Westboro side. We have the Milford side. We have the Ashland right. side. And there are different types of neighborhoods and different challenges, I think, right. in each of those areas. Very much so. so. And Hopkinton, actually, I know when I was on the Land Use Study Committee, it was like it was. It's one of the larger geographically okay. sized towns in um, spread out. Yeah, in Massachusetts, so That's it's very true. wide. So, like for my side of town to get to the other side of town with no traffic can take 20 minutes. Sometimes. That's true. That's so right. it's like there. It's it's very diverse, and mm -hmm. it's you know different. You know, and it, it's it'll be fun for you to kind of see all the different neighborhoods and they've changed sure. a lot too a lot is changing right now sure so but go ahead tell us what you want okay so you know yeah. i think there's a lot of attention generally that the downtown area the old downtown yeah. gets um and you know rightfully so because it's the center of our town and, yeah. and the common is some place that everyone can gather yes. um but there are so many different um neighborhoods and so many different areas that are that are very you know they're beautiful in their own right um i think the the difficulty with planning board is that um, when people, members of the public, uh, come to planning board to speak <laughs> and to um, to comment on things, it's generally an emotionally charged situation sure. for them because yeah. they're reacting to something Absolutely. that someone yeah. wants to do, and so that's you know I think that's probably the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, if it were if it were just a matter of reviewing plans and discussing mm -hmm. things and details. But, but it really, uh, there, there's a lot of emotion around it because right. people are talking about what's going to happen in their neighborhood or in their, you know, even next door to them. Right. And so. And I have to say, I watched a, I, I was, I've been at a few planning board meetings over the years. I did see a recent one where um, there definitely was a high level of emotional mm -hmm. engagement. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated Muriel Kramer on the planning board and thank God she is the chair now because she really she was very comment. moderating yeah. so she was kind of you know accepting the comments from the people in the uh, not audience necessarily but the yeah. gathering yeah. and people on the board who had highly charged emotional commenting right, right. and and really you know a balanced approach is the best in my opinion right. because you can hear both sides Absolutely. and come to a calm rational decision right and that's very and that's why you do. have it as a public forum is because mm -hmm. exactly. you, you, it's you know you have this stuff come before you and you don't know how it is necessarily going to affect people and by what they bring forward mm -hmm. and by Muriel um, navigating that conversation right. or moderating that conversation that. It, it really helps you as a planning board member understand what's happening and it may affect what you guys decide as well because then you you see the whole scope right of, right Absolutely. well or at least as much of the scope that's before you of of what decision you need to make oh yeah and, and I, the, it's it's also true um that that you know people asked me during the campaign uh, season that what do you want to do on the planning board and it's not it's not about what I right, want to exactly. do. Um, I don't come in with an agenda. Right, right. Um, I realize good. that some That's people healthy. do, but yeah. it's it's. I think it's more important for me to ask other people 
to mm-hmm. I go yeah because yes. because what that's what's wonderful what, yeah that's perfect I, I need to and as a public servant that's right. what your job is you mm-hmm. you have your own opinion I felt that way on the land you study I mean I have a very strong opinion but it was important for me to listen mm-hmm. to what other people said around me because I do represent you know what I mean and I wasn't elected I was appointed but when you're right. elected you represent all the citizens of Hockington Absolutely. so it's it's important to come in with an objective mind and, yep. and really not with an agenda because they I mean I think that is why a lot of people get in town politics involved because you know? yeah. of the agenda yeah or, well Perhaps just it may personally affect them or some have an agenda and then strength. others like you just yeah. want to serve and and it, it right. work on the whole town right. and right. I have to say John Ferrari has done an excellent job mm-hmm. as chair as well not to take away from him mm-hmm. but just watching how that all was happening with the heightened emotion, I was really appreciative mm-hmm. of her ability to sort of calm yeah. it down. And then I was delighted to see that she's the chair. So I think Absolutely. you're you're going to come on to a, you know, in, into a, good a really good situation. Yeah, situation. Yes. So and you'll miss people say? like Irfan and, you know, the outgoing chair members, uh, I mean, committee members, but yeah. mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. So it'll be good. So have you had, how many meetings have you had since you've been elected? <laughs> we only had one meeting so oh, far. Oh, so my so first my first full-length meeting will be next Monday. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So it's like Exciting, yes. mm-hmm. so, so you were saying you had to read a packet I've of been, information. I've been the... studying the master plan that oh, was yes, yes. issued last last year. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, but that's just in preparation. The, the, sure. For the meeting itself, there'll be a packet that comes out later this week that yeah. I'll have to study up over the weekend. And so, are you are you a do you love to read? Are you a great reader, or this is a struggle? I do I do read a lot. Awesome, yeah. I, that's yeah. what I was thinking, yeah. but I didn't want to assume. Right. I do read a lot. And that I, is a fun. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that's an interesting part. Mm-hmm. So what stood out to you on the master plan that you thought mm. needed attention or you thought maybe the planning board may be looking at in the next coming years? Well, one of the things that I brought up at that very brief meeting we already had was um, I, I, I just want to know um, what the status is of the action items that were put forth in the master plan. Yeah. And from what I understand at this point, um, they were assigned to certain committee members to follow through. Yes, yes. And um, so we'll be going through all of those, reassigning the ones for, for committee members who have left. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, or I should say board members. I, yeah. I don't okay. know all the lingo. We, we know what you mean. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's the we same. know what you yeah. mean. It's okay. So, so, yeah, so that's, I think that's very important. I think uh, the work that went into the master plan, right. um, it needs to be implemented Absolutely. appropriately. Yeah. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice vision statement. It's not, mm. it doesn't have everything laid out for implementation, sure. obviously. Right. Um, but uh, but the, the implementation plan that was put forward really should be followed through. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so well, the so, town pays absolutely. for that, absolutely. and then they have yeah. professionals do it, and I'm sure MAPC probably did it. And right. Yeah, so you look at that, and, you know, I think the master plan is very infor- important because I think most of us see things that are a year or two ahead mm-hmm. of us, and the master, mm-hmm. what year was the master plan? It was, it was 2017. So oh, so it's very new. It's very new, yeah. And it, it's done every 10 years. Years, Ten correct? years, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So when you look at that, you know, because actually we we worked on the master ideas at the master plan with the land use study committee giving input because how the western mm-hmm. nurseries development was going to affect mm-hmm. the town and change things and you know it it's done some things that we expected and done some things that we didn't. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard. The master plan definitely helps you. Just by Let's statistics, do, look at what yes. might happen. Put it into context. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. A, it's a guideline sort of for you to move from, an yes. outline, and you, yep. then you go from there. Right. So I have to say, I know the town planner, the new town planner, is someone that I knew when I was working in Weston. Oh, that's great. So oh, mm-hmm. yeah. so I saw her at the, the, the meeting where she was sort of um, being introduced, mm-hmm. and, and I said, I think I know. So it's so she's a fabulous person. Weston is a great Fab, and from place, yeah. from I know her family. I you know so we are so lucky to have her here and to have her interested in doing this work. She's brilliant. That's she's great. experienced and she's a good person. You yes. know so that's really what we want. I think she fits in very well just as a person. Mm-hmm. And then if she has that great experience and she's right. not you know she's. 30-ish so young, yeah. yeah so that's wonderful because that's someone we'll who can grow with us yeah. yes. and also not being from here can come in with fresh eyes right. Right. you know and not feel like hey it used to be because I have some of that yeah it yeah used to be this way and we didn't <laughs> yeah. used to have uh, as yeah. many right. people and oh, there's more traffic yeah. you know so she can come in 
look at the situation yep. with clear eyes without the baggage that right. some of us may yeah. have. Well, Weston has a lot of commonality with Hawkington because well, it's true. on a big beltway. Uh -huh. um, we have a good amount of open space. You know, it, it, it does have a lot of commonality because Weston's the Mass Pike in 128. Right. And we have the Mass Pike in 495. So I think, you know, right. just the it's challenges. It's a great yeah, those Yeah, someone actually, I had a neighbor who had grown up in Weston mm -hmm. here. She lived here, and she said to me, Hopkinton is like Weston it, used to mm -hmm. be. So oh. who knew? Right. But I think you're right. I think yeah, that access to the main to the Mass Pike and 495 and Route 9 it puts us in a unique position. Yeah. So you guys, you have this wonderful opportunity and, and very exciting. Um, I did go to the Main Street Quarter, original Main yeah. Street Quarter meeting. Mm -hmm. I think it was last year. Um, and some of the notes I took, um, I thought were very interesting. Um, John Burchard was talking about the preliminary plans and the Mass DOT and the transportation improvement program. You know, and my understanding was that the the um, crosswalks, the sidewalks, the bike lanes are some key components of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure about the underground uh, wiring. You know, right. the underground, which looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not sure if it's a necessity. Um, well, the traffic it'll cause the underground warrior just to implement it. You know what I mean? Like it's already a tight because mm -hmm. I live on that side of mm -hmm. town and sometimes when I go to pick up Celia from the middle school, it can take me 20 minutes. Yes. Well, and, and, the, a, and you, the construction you know. at the marathon school has slowed Oh, yeah. Yes. There. yeah. Yeah. And then. Hmm. So I have a question. This is like a very tiny thing. And I don't know <laughs> if you've even thought about it, but I, I look at it. So, you know, coming up. Um, Main Street, and you you know where Hawkington Lumber is, and mm -hmm. the and you take that right off to 135. Mm -hmm. Why is that island there? Because that like I think that causes so much traffic. That one island that's right after Hawkington Lumber that stops cars from scooting over. You know to, they put that in after the NGCC moved in there. Yeah, I know because I and have I'm my sure kids it was, there. <laughs> and that's but that's what I think it is. But I look at that all the time, and I do traffic flow patterns for yeah. emergency dispensing sites and sheltering sites. So I look at a lot of traffic patterns and I'm like, why is that there? Because that would, that would. I'm going to do what my teachers do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I know. You do uh, know. You yeah, do. Yeah. It is intended to slow the traffic right. down. It is. So yeah. they not only have the striped thing right. from Mezzer Street or whatever Mezzer, street that, yeah. that's coming out. Yep. I mean, I don't know that. So until someone said to me, yeah. you know, in my face, the reason Why, for yeah. those stripes on the ground are so that you stop and let the people into traffic. I never yeah, knew that. Right. I think a lot of people don't know that. They should have a little pop-up sign that says something. Yeah, if someone's here, let them out. Right. But so that's one piece because people coming down. Oh, what will coming peel off. around the corner? Oh, yes. And if they peel around the corner and there's a person there signaling to go into the parking lot, right. that is just that's a kind of poor. Yeah. I mean, poor planning for the daycare to be there. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a difficult. Spot, it is a difficult you know, spot because I think that causes all... a huge amount of the back up downtown yes because yeah. once a, you get past yeah. that it moves because they all have to come out the back way and and on that little street on that island is yeah, yeah Missouri. and um and that's you know and if they have to turn left well that's you know, nearly impossible um, right but that is why it was put in right yeah Interesting. and i have to say i worked there when it was first built or oh. the first couple of years and they didn't they weren't able to go all the way through and come out Missouri. Because there oh. were homes there, mm -hmm. and oh. so if they had been able to do that originally, they could have done a little better thing Planning, where yeah. they take a right on Meserve and go through the parking lot and come out. Right. Maybe that. I don't oh. even think that would work because you have people peeling off the corner. Yeah. You know? So it's a, it is a challenge, all of these things. Right. I just Sorry, so and I thought of that the other day. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to ask there her about that. There are so many pieces yeah. to what you do. Yeah. So how do they, do they, and you say, I really also think it was a brilliant idea to assign the different oh, projects yes. to different mm -hmm. people so they could sort of chair that Frank Durso, Cliff yep. Kistner, That's right. do something and then yep. whoever else, you know, so they, they have their own um, departments, project, project. Yeah. right? Yeah. And so, and then they can really delve into the details they can spearhead on it, it. Mm -hmm. they can report on it, they can mm -hmm. follow it up. 
you know, I think that was brilliant. I don't know whose idea that was, but I yeah, love it. It is a great model. We do that at our coalition level a lot and break off in subcommittees because yeah. it, it's really hard in a planning board meeting. And I've been to planning board meetings. It's been many years, but they can go on for hours Well, if it's hours. great. If it's, you know what I mean? Yes, so, yes. The organization of that, yeah. it really helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you know which... Department I don't. Here? Okay, so you don't do, know that. No. Do you have All one right. that you want to be on? <laughs> <laughs> or one that you know, sparks your interest? Or you're just open to I'm, I'm very open and, to yeah. whatever is needed. Yeah. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you, so what issues, before you moved to Hopkinton, were you interested in or involved in the town where you were living? Or were you aware, were you aware of the planning board or planning issues where you were? I was not. Okay. Um, uh, I, I think I was aware that there was such a thing yeah, as a planning yeah, board. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, but um, I, I grew up in Wisconsin, and we don't have oh. the same model of government there. Idaho, too. It's county government. Yes. Yeah, so the rest of the world, United States works very differently. You mean than... not all the people can get up and speak their mind? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Give it, it, because hours? I'm from Idaho. I know. I'm like, wow. <laughs> no. Yes, I get it. It's a very different. Oh, so I didn't it, know so it must be cool for you to be able to. It is. Yeah. It is. I think it's a very neat I model. think it's, you know, and being from Idaho, that same model um, where it's a county government, and you're very displaced from... Yeah. from local government they do their thing you do your thing you kind of do business with them but it's very yes it's kind of hands-off but i i really love and i've been here longer than idaho but you know I, I think it's it's very you know it's frustrating at times but i also think it's it's granular it's real government it's mm -hmm. it's people make the decisions people are involved in their community it, mm -hmm. it builds a strong sense of community and collaboration yes. i think and it, it brings and people it, and like, like you. you were saying it can be frustrating because it's basically small. almost every meeting we're we're learning you know everyone mm -hmm. in the room is learning a little something more mm -hmm. about what you know so so we don't come in as experts yeah. whether the planning board members or the public you know we're, we're not the experts the, the experts there are generally the town employees right, right, they know right, they know right. a lot or the um, surveyors or and we're, we're lucky that yeah. we have them yeah. <laughs> right. but but we're not experts and That's that gives us important. the opportunity to, to ask Dumb questions. Right. <laughs> and, but they yeah. should be asked. The yes. dumb right. questions are, are not dumb. Ones. Right. They're yeah. actually the things that can guide people to intelligent decisions. That's right. exactly Thinking right. Thinking about all the different pieces. I agree. Right. You know, because if people it, don't say, well, what, has anyone ever thought of this? Yeah. You know, maybe maybe they're not thinking that it's so simple that they're I did, overlooking I did a lot it. of that on the zoning advisory committee. I'm awesome. Like, you guys probably know this better than I do, but... You this that, what about yeah. this this doesn't make sense right <laughs> so, but it's um, important yeah, because it's i good. think when you get wrapped up in you know, you've done something for a long time like i've been in public health you get mm -hmm. these, these blinders almost because right. you get used to a certain protocol and having and that's why i love about elected positions or appointed positions in a town done by a volunteer thank you very much right. i was gonna <laughs> yeah, say yeah, it's yeah. all volunteer, it's all all volunteer so time. you know yeah. we're so grateful for it but yeah. by done by you guys i think it really gives us a, a better perspective on how things in your your regular citizen you're involved because you care about the town and you have feedback to give or or have stuff to learn to evaluate for your constituency right, right. you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's 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 exciting yeah mm -hmm. and thank you it's so nice well, thank you know you. It's, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that is how our town works yeah and i, I think actually yeah. I think back to the colonial days and yeah, you know people too. standing out there and saying, I "Well, know. citizens." And <laughs> so our model is still functuring in right. that similar way. That's right. right. So that's right. We really appreciate your thank being part you. of that. Thank yeah, you. And we're thank actually you. out of time. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me yes. on. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. That was easy. Yes. Yes. Oh, so, but if there's ever something, you know, if there's ever yeah. an issue, we, we're an issue-based show. Okay. Yeah. So if there's something that you would like to talk about, and hopefully people will call in, um, let us then know. yeah, let us know. We'd love to. Have you back. Oh, I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so this much. This might be a great way to get other people involved. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's Absolutely. right. Great. And we'll Thank be you. back with our next segment, which is TikTok. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about how do you prevent tick bites and what do you do to treat them. See you soon.
picture of Charlie and Jolly and sit down with a bit of a fan. Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show. We hope you'll call in and uh, or email us on at live at hcam.tv. This segment we're going to talk about ticks. Yes. There seem to be a lot this year there's because a, of all the moisture. There's a huge influx of ticks yep. this year and, and there's a huge influx of diseases, um, right. tick-borne illnesses right. and um, we're going to talk about ways that you can prevent it but um, you know, it, it's it's really they're they're quite dangerous when you right. think about you know once you if you contract Lyme's disease, there's several other types of diseases right. you can contract, but it actually comes from a germ that's inside the deer tick's stomach, and that's what causes Lyme disease. So that's why it's important when they attach to you that you remove it within 24 hours. So mm -hmm. anytime you're out, you know, make sure that you check everything. And and there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually prevent ticks getting on you. you you can actually treat your clothes uh -huh. with permethrin. You can buy permethrin. Um, you can get a tractor supply. You can buy it online. It's also part of yeah, many commercial spray, so commercial. you don't have to get specifically permethrin. Right. Just make sure it has permethrin in right. it, and you can actually treat your clothes. So what you do is you soak your clothes in the permethrin, and you put it in a plastic bag overnight, and then you dry it, and it will last four or five washes. So that's one way to kind of really, that's probably one of the more effective ways. And then wearing long sleeve, which is hard in the summer, and long sleeve pants and things like that. But that is one way. And to of course, I'm thinking, well, what are the long-term effects of permethrin on the body? It's a chemical. Right. But, but that's why you put it on your clothes, because right. then you're not putting it directly on your skin. Right. And so that's it washes what we off recommend. the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So when you dry it into the clothes, it, it sticks into the fabric. And that's right. one way that's very safe. Yep. And, and as you mentioned, tucking in. If you have mm -hmm. pants, you want to pull up yep. the socks over the pants. Right. And then white is best. Yeah. Even though they, you know, white socks, right. some people don't like to wear white socks, but then you can see the ticks. Sure. Tuck the pants in, long sleeve, like you yep. said, and white, I think, yep. so you can see something crawling. And, and, and another thing, too, is the nymphs are the ones that generally carry the, the, that bacteria so they're more virulent to get the Lyme's disease and they're teeny tiny, tiny. yep freckle like little little tiny so you know it's, it's it's hard to find them once they attach and that and you know and one thing is to tie up your hair wear a hat yeah you know things like that that so because they live in bushes and trees and yep. you know things like that and there are two types of ticks yep. so this is the deer tick we're talking yep. about which is actually carried by white-footed mice yep and the mice <laughs> play around the deer's toes yeah, and then and the, the ticks tick get onto up. the deer yeah yep. nice that's the that's thing the for cycle to, of it yeah and it, and they're they're you know like for me i i had a horse that got very sick from tick or that's how much oh i didn't know yeah that. that it caused laminitis with him and i lost him oh. from a tick-borne illness and um you know, like I have a little bit of animosity to towards Of course. Ticks. I'm like, why I don't know these? anybody yeah. anybody who likes ticks. Yeah, I'm like, why yeah. are these things on the face of the earth? No way. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, and Lyme's disease has so, it's an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. So people associate it with a red, you know, bullseye. They associate it with a bunch of things, but it can cause joint problems. It can cause damage to internal organs. It can mm -hmm. cause all kinds of neurological damage. So I'm just looking up some yeah. of the names of, so Lyme disease. Disease, yep. as the uh, formal name borreliosis yep. um, and those those it's black-legged ticks because yep. um, they are including deer ticks yep. um, it's a species of bacteria which is a spiral it's a spirochete yep. spiral shaped bacteria yep. there's babiosis <laughs> Babiosis, yep. um, which is the hard ticks as well, and that's Babiesa, a protozoan. Then there's 
ehrlichosis. Allergia, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, ehrlichosis. Lone star ticks, which are also hard ticks. Yeah. Then there's Rocky Mountain spotted fever yep. kind of ticks. Not which, as prevalent as here. Yeah, no, yes, because that would be west. in the Rocky yeah. Mountains. Yeah. And then southern tick, um, ablimom, ablimom, blah, blah, blah. The Latin names, Ablioma yeah. <laughs> americanum. Right. Or lone star tick. So, yeah, lots of ticks. Tick-borne relapsing fever, which is Ornithodorus mubata, mm -hmm. or African tick. Then there's Tularenia dermacentor, also <laughs> from a, a dog tick. Yep. Anaplasmosis, yep. which we've heard of. Colorado tick fever, Powassan encephalitis. Okay. Q fever, African cattle disease, heartland viral disease. And that's, so yeah. how many was that, 15? Yeah. You know, so and we they're think very, of, they're, a lot of them are lethal diseases. So yeah. that's. We think of just Lyme around here. Yeah, exactly. And, and I actually have two well, friends. Well, Ehrlichia is, uh, goes along with Erl Lyme. Ehrlichosis. Yeah, so Ehrlichia, actually, Macho had got it prior to, that's how I knew he got Lyme's disease, because we couldn't check it out, and he was showing symptoms of Ehrlichia, and that's where he, then we kind of moved into the, the to Lyme's diagnosis, and that was very early on. We're Sorry talking. about that. No, it, 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 that happened, oh, geez, I want to say, it, he started with Seven, the Lyme's yeah. eight, nine years ago yeah, yeah, when yeah. it first started Sorry. with him. So it's, it's, it's a tough disease. So I want to say, um, this this is from the CDC, yep. um, E-Medicine Health. Uh, they're talking about a Lyme disease can Ha develop an allergic reaction to eating red meat, mm -hmm. which I never knew. Yeah, very and rare, but friend, yeah. Two friends yeah. of mine in Hopkinton have the Bell's palsy. Uh, so that when it goes untreated, can, yeah. it can affect nerves. Yeah, yeah, you get the you know, and one and side, the and there are different forms of that, yep. right, tearing, and then yep. one side's not moving as much yep, as the other. Blinking, yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's just a crazy Well, thing. And, and if you do find a tick on yourself, what do you do? So you right. find a tick, and, and what I recommend to everybody is Try to decide how long you had it on, but I say it's not a bad idea to call your Check primary, it anyway. Your primary care physician. And if you do, if they do, most likely they may treat you with doxycycline. Yeah. So you do a round of doxycycline, and the sooner they catch it, mm -hmm. the more likely you're not going to... I carry Lyme's disease. So, oh. you know, and I've been treated for it before. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, and it's always in your system. It never mm -hmm. goes away. Because it's so an they, autoimmune. Yeah, so you, you check your titer and things like that. But though, it's very important just to be aware. Mm -hmm. So once you find that tick, call your primary care physician. Certainly if you see that bullseye, character. Bullseye, you're in I never got the bullseye, right. so not everybody gets it. But I say anytime you find a tick and you're not sure how long it's been on you, you know, I mean, sometimes you'll see them crawling on you. You can pull them off, things like that. Well, but I've had them. I've had them actually in me a few yeah. times, and I can feel. So, you know, right. something's tickling, tick, tickling. Yeah. Something tickling, and I look, and ew. Uh, yeah. So it's attached. Yeah. Um, but because I knew that it was within the 24 hours, I put them, picked them off. Yeah. The really important thing to remember is, and I've got to this is from WebMD. Yep. Bite treatment. Well, and also if it's how attached, to the wearing gloves. Because yeah. you don't want to get any of that on you, and I have to say I haven't worn gloves. Yeah. Grasp the tick with clean tweezers as close to the skin as possible to get the head and mouth parts. If the mouth parts remain, do not attempt to remove them as your body will expel them naturally. Mm -hmm. I've seen people try to get oh, the yeah. mouth parts out. And you can get an infection exactly. and then you can transfer some right. Because it's in and, the saliva. And this is saying pull the tick straight out gently and steadily. Do not twist. Yep. Do not try to move the tick with a hot match, which I've heard people say. Right, or right. petroleum jelly, right. which you know suffocates them because they regurgitate that, the fluids from yep. their stomach, their like saliva, you were saying. It's in their saliva, so they're, they're yep. getting all of that stuff that you don't want comes out if right. you try to burn them or, or right. drown, uh, suffocate them. Then wash hands and cleanse the bite area with warm water, gentle soap, apply yep. alcohol to prevent infection. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important thing. Absolutely. So and even, how you remove the tick is very important. Right. And if you don't know, go, I mean, the CDC has great information. Mass Department of Public Health exactly. has tons of information yep. about ticks. And, it's, mm -hmm. it's in, in, you know, we, we do a ton of outreach during the year about, you know, tick-borne illnesses. And one thing is really important to how to create a safe environment in your yard. Yeah. So all of us are outside. You want to make sure that, you know, stuff is trimmed back. Right. You know what I mean? That there's not a lot of vegetation that's overgrown in your yard that you're going to be messing Well, the tall and, grasses are, yeah. the, are the things that the deer, when they walk by, yeah, sweep the ticks the things, off. Right. Yep. I can remember going to the vineyard, yep. walking off the beach on the pathway from South Beach and seeing ticks 
uh -huh. on the beach grass yep. with their little legs going yeah. like this. Yeah, you're like, ah! Because they could feel the heat of the person, you know. <laughs> They're like, I'm ready to get you. I want to run. And ride. they don't jump, but they just no. kind of, yeah, they, like They cling. just wait for you to brush them, and then they're on. And that brings another important thing is wearing yeah. clothes that is are kind of slippery. So, like, sport material and things like that. So, like, sweaters, they may be easier to clasp on because they have little hooks in their feet or their legs. So, that kind of is one way. So, you know, like, slicker clothing that's outdoor clothing. But you or, can... Oh, but what? I was going to say no clothing, but that's not appropriate. Yeah, and if, I, like, if you had no clothing on. <laughs> well, they probably grab on to that. Right, right. That's right. not that slippery. Right, so, but anyway, so, but that's, and then also you can treat your yard. I mean, you can, you know, you can get permethrins. Landscape companies do it. I actually have cedar oil okay. sprayed on the perimeter of my yeah. yard. And, um, you know, that's, that's non-toxic, but I also do use the permethrin on my horses, and I just do their legs. And I haven't, knock on wood, I haven't found a tick on my horses in a long time. You know so, what I so mean? So there was so. a very interesting thing. When I was looking this up on the, C, uh, the um, website, CDC, yep. they, they showed an advertisement for something that looked like a donut hmm. of yellowish, some kind of um, some herbal. Wear. Yeah, well, or you just lie there and it. I don't know. I couldn't figure that well, out. So I know what that has. That has yeah. citronella, tea that's, tree oil, and cedar oil in yeah. it. So it naturally repels the ticks. Right. So and and with me, I make my own bug spray. So I use tea tree oil, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I put lavender in it because I like the smell of lavender, and I put citronella oil in it. Yep. And it's a very easy thing. I just put it in like an old spray bottle. Right. And I spray it on my body. So like. Do you spray the horses? I use the permethrin on the horses, so like, um, but I use the natural stuff on myself. So because right. I'm, a, you know, but the horses have hair. You got to remember that the permethrin get... goes goes into their hair. So and they oh. also have a spot treatment of permethrin, which they use for dogs and cats, but you and also horses. That yeah, you put and, on then, the neck. and they also have a collar. To, yeah, to repel. and like bands. Yeah, and, and those are natural. Those are citronella, um, the natural ones. But also I do things. Ticks don't have um, natural bug predators, but like for mosquitoes and things like that, I buy fly predator wasps that actually lay their larvae on ticks. On, on not ticks, but other larvae like flying flies, stable flies, horse flies, deer flies, and mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are vectors as well. They transmit a lot of diseases: West Nile virus, East China equine encephalitis, yeah. and things. There is something that eats ticks. I don't know if it's a kind of bird. Chickens. My chickens, chickens, chickens do, eat ticks. My chickens do an awesome job. Yeah, that's that's what they want to do, and they yeah. zoom around and they right. eat ticks. All, I mean, they eat bugs all day. Perfect. Yeah. So, so this is something again, um, and your very interesting. Wild yep. Right. <laughs> this is the the tick secretes cementum. Mm -hmm. to more firmly attach its mouth parts yep. and head to the host. That's why you see that white. Ew. Yeah. Ticks, <laughs> Ew is right. ticks may secrete or regurgitate small amounts of saliva that contain neurotoxins. Yeah. These, and which is what the Bell's palsy comes from, a neurotoxin, yeah. clearly. These nerve well, poisons it cleverly, yeah. cleverly prevent the host from feeling the pain and irritation of the bite. Mm -hmm. So people don't know. I don't, I, I don't know I have a bite, but something, when they're crawling on me, I can right. tell. But once they're attached, it's very hard to tell. Yep. And then, so people don't notice the tick bite or the feeding of the tick sucking right. the blood. Yep. Um, and the saliva may contain a blood thinner to make it easier yep. for the tick and to get all of that. Yep. Right. So it's just incredible. Risk factors include That's hiking good. in the woods. And I saw, this is part of what made me want to do this show. Yeah. I saw a guy, and he's walking. He's like an experienced hiker. Walks through the woods and covered. He had white pants. Covered, covered in ticks. With ticks. You're like, oh. and I just thought, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. you know, and this year particularly because it's, it's been it's so a wet, huge, yeah. so they love moisture, right? They don't do well when it's dry. Right, yeah, that's usually yeah. Well, and it eliminates vegetation too when it's dry, so that's yeah. kind of what they. But so, they're they're icky. And this is thing, <laughs> yeah. So hiking in woods, yep. grasses with skin exposed to the environment, especially yep. April to September. Yep. It says a risk factor also is not using insect repellent or clothing that protects arms, legs, or body parts. Right. So as long as your body's protected, yeah. whether it's permethrin or it's the natural yep. citronella mixed with yeah, the tea tree, tea tree oil. And, and, yep. Uh, yep. Or you tuck everything in, in. so yep. there's no way for them to get anywhere. 
Um, and then what happens sometimes is if your pet comes in the mm -hmm. home and, oh, little nice dog, yeah. all of a sudden the treat pet's pets. got it. And yeah. so the ticks are in the home. Pets, and pets then, are easy to treat because cows exactly. you can do, or cats and dogs, you can do flea tick collars and those work quite well. Yes. You know, goodness. and you can do the, the front line, yep. which is expensive. I mean, front line is like $80. So I've always used the, the, um, the, the flea collars because they, they I just find them work better and then I know you know like when one falls off you know and I put a date on I write one yeah, thing so I want to point out too is if you think you've been exposed you can't see your back you got to check the creases in your body you got to check places right because yeah, I mean, they can go the ears, by your ears right armpits be, yeah yep all, and areas yep, that yep. yep crevices for and, sure and so back to the yard so remove any leaf litter um, clear grasses and brush brushes around the home and edge the lawns. Yes. You know, where you hang out. Um, place a three foot barrier of wood chips and gravel between the lawns. Mm -hmm. So that kind of prevents the ticks. <clears throat> Stack wood le neatly. Mm -hmm. Mow the lawn frequently. Keep playground equipment, decks, and paleos from the edges of trees. So yeah. simple things or like again, that. Or again, the leaf litter. You don't yeah. want the kids to think, oh, it's all right, jump in the leaves. Yeah, that's you know, one and, of the worst places. Yeah. Right, so they've got this big pile, yeah. and that's, in fact, I had a friend move, uh, you know, move a big tree branch. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I'll just move this out of the way, which yep. is very kind and gallant. Yes. And then he had found a tick on him. Sure. Because sure. it had been lying there, and the deer or the mice or whatever had been there before him. Right. And, and there uh, it is. Yeah. There it is. And you discourage unwelcome animals such as deer, raccoons, stray dogs. Um, foxes. Foxes, fisher cats. Yeah. yeah like all those guys. Yeah. They, they're they mm -hmm. mammals, so they yeah. carry it. Right. Interestingly enough, um, People don't know, and this is another, people talk about rabies when you have animals. Um, possums are naturally immune. So that would just yes. cut, and they eat ticks. They that's, take, that's what I yeah, was thinking possums, about. Yeah, that's possums, that's what it may, reminded because me of. Because it makes no sense to me at all yeah. that a possum would yeah. care about a tick. Yeah, they, they can eat thousands perfect. of ticks in a day. That's what it was. So if you see a possum, they don't have rabies, number one, and number yeah. two. They're so cute, Yeah, too. they are cute. So, But go ahead. Wait, sorry. So I was going to say, um, when do you go for medical care? Yeah. Um, I, and you were saying, as I would do, check it anyway. Yeah. But this is yeah. saying if the person bitten exhibits weakness, paralysis, lethargy, right. confusion, fever, numbness, headache, rashes, go check it yes, out. Yes, absolutely. If you can't get the tick out, go have it looked at. Right. If the symptoms persist or get worse, uh, go check it out. Yeah. Pregnant women should say right away. Yep. And before they would put permethrin, they yep. shouldn't put permethrin probably. Right. Because it's it's a it's chemical. A but they could treat their clothing. So they, the thing that I'm I would worry. Yeah. I would rather put yeah. citronella and sure. That's just sure. Me. And I was very careful when I was yeah. pregnant too. But yeah. I mean, you can. You know, probably one of the what we talk about is the clothing being treated, but it's so important to just it's All better right. safe than sorry. Right. If you think so the, you're exposed, but exactly. Go ahead, sorry. Keep All the going. doctors, sorry, the doctors do the blood test. Yeah. Um, home remedies. Yeah. Um, the greatest concern is transmission of disease. So home remedies would be um, yeah, don't use the match. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't take any the rest of it out. Um, and that's just exactly what I already said. There, this is a or, different. Yeah. This is a different website. I didn't know if they would have anything else. Yep. But they're talking about cleansing, keeping your hands washed. Yep. Um, and checking. I use my fingers with yeah. my nails to pull it out. Right. But they're recommending tweezers get it as close to the head. And you want to get the tweezers that have that really fine tip. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually, they're, you know, like in health departments, there's tons of information about tick information. I imagine yeah. in health classes, because I know we teach it in some of the schools I, I work with, um, information about to kids yes and you educate the kids because i mean Absolutely. my house kids are in the yard outside all the time so keeping the debris clean but but checking everybody yeah and that's what i tell the kids <laughs> at school if they go over into the because yeah, we have fences have that, that we have fences area. that back up to woods conservation land yep so if they go into the woods for a ball yep i say do a tick check yep just because right, right. you know it's close to the fence it, who knows they crawl right so right yeah. Excellent. So, but that's the end of our TikTok. Yeah. So, so be keep, careful. Yeah, be careful out there. And, and check with your doctor. Yeah. Check with the doc because you heard the TikTok. I don't know. Sorry. So we'll, <laughs> that's a good, a good so we'll be back uh, to talk about free speech or should people be minding their their manners. All right. See you soon. <laughs> that, was, that was cute. I like oh, that.
that's just by the street and then yep. the numbers are in on that. Typically you have to have a key entrance to make it drive through the street and then sometimes they may have a number box on the other side or there's gonna be a more challenging entrance where they just put a number on their side of the road so you can find them easier. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. And we're back. So we got so excited talking about ticks, we forgot two really important things. Yes. One is you can't squish them. Yes. So after you get them off, don't just put them on the ground because they might know. crawl on someone else. I flush them. I uh, cut them in half with scissors, which is kind of brutal, but it, it, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm we like, oh. all have our methods and... <laughs> Who knows? I hope I'm not growing, you know, huge mammoth ticks in the sewer somewhere. I don't right. know. Anyway, it's like a science fiction. Talk about so the So the other thing that yeah. was really cool, um, I saw on some Channel 2 program, there's something called um, KRS, K-R-I-S-P-R. It's a change of DNA. They change the DNA of the mice to resist the Lyme. So once they alter the DNA of the mice, they can't. They're the they're, master, they yeah. don't pass along. The they mice. pass along resistance ah, to the disease. So they, they so change smart. the DNA of the mice to resist Lyme, so they don't pass it to the ticks. Mm -hmm. So the ticks, the ticks aren't really. Yeah. You know, they just have this in their bodies because yeah. it comes from the mice. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the C R C is for clustered regularly, interspaced, short palindromic repeats. I don't know. Whatever I'm that just means, repeating if what it makes some resistance. So you're <laughs> replacing the genes with new ones. Um, mice develop Lyme-resistant antibodies. Then they inject those into the things that make babies. And then the Lyme-resistant gene passes. I thought Love that was it. so cool. Sorry. No, that is very, that's so, cool. So the topic we're actually talking about yes. now <laughs> is free speech. Yeah. And some examples of people who have been freely speaking right. and were not appropriately freely speaking are right. Roseanne Barr. Yep. And, um, and somebody else that. Samantha B. Yeah. Recently spoke yep. about Ivanka Trump very uh, unkindly. Right. Uh, rudely. And President Trump. And I mean, well, he does it all the time. Yeah. And then Kelly Sadler. Yeah. So um, she joked about McCain while yeah, he's dying anyway. That was awful, yeah. So there's a. There's a part that's, is this free speech or right. is this just vulgar, right. not necessary, unkind, right. you know, right. provocative, provoking? And free speech is so important. So right. I've been kind of watching the NFL with the yes. kneeling and things like that. And, and you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because, you know, they're kneeling for a different reason. It's turned into this big political thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know we did talk about it on our Right, and this is more show. about the, the, the celebrities right. saying these things right. because they're a comedian, right. so they should have the right to right. Say, say something, well, and, but and it's not me, funny. you, you got to draw the line somewhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I think that demeans probably the message you're trying to say. Maybe if you disagree exactly. with someone... You you may say it, you know what I mean. You can you can say it in a way that's not offensive, right, or vulgar, like right. you said. You know right. what I mean. I think it's important to when you when you do exercise free speech, just have some courtesy or some some form of courtesy, and particularly if you're in the public eye, right. And I know comedians. That's what comedians do, and you know they get warnings when they go into certain shows and right. and, and things like that. But it's it's a tough. You know, it's a tough thing. Yeah, and the thing with Roseanne mm -hmm. in particular, yeah, she wasn't even being a comedian at that moment. Right. She, she was, was tweeting on her just personal account. Felt like talking. She saw a photograph of Valerie Jarrett, who was, that was an African American, was yeah. a senior 
advisor to Barack Obama throughout yeah. his presidency, considered one of his most influential aides, highly intelligent, gracious, compassionate, right. wonderful, right. professional woman right. who has done so much right. for the country during that was that eight year period. Yeah. So yeah. she she thought it would be funny, haha, ha, look, I've observed something and yeah. people think I'm a star so I can say what I want. Yeah. If the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of Apes had a baby, this just even saying it makes me sick. Me too. Because I I just when can't I imagine heard it. I'm like I don't think that's funny. I don't think that's <sighs> I mean, to me, that was, I, I found it extremely it's vulgar. It's offensive. And, I yeah, feel. I mean, if you don't agree with your policy or, you know what I mean? It just, and that's not funny. No. That's and not it's funny. And it's not even, I mean, it's, it, it's, there's it's nothing, racist. It's I mean, totally it's, it's racist. racist. You know, and Nothing right counts. about it. And to yeah. credit the station, they pulled her show. Yep. They pulled reruns. Yep. They pulled, you know, she lost whatever other things she had going for her. Yeah. Uh, you know, even though this was a highly uh, rated show, right? And that concerns me a little too. Me too. Because the bottom line of that show was racist jokes. Right. right. Um, it's not, you know, and I know we went through the Archie Bunker stages. Exactly. And there was, and that there was a time and a place, but I think now we're beyond that. You know, right. like we've we've grown up, we're a different our country that doesn't represent what we what we I know I agree with free speech but you have to I mean there's slander well I mean in exactly. and, and verbal abuse and I mean there's things that right. are you know that that mm. comes that's where you kind of step over the line I mean is that absolutely you do have free speech but is it like no it's awful you got to kind of and I, and I <laughs> think I do think somewhere. that the role modeling of the current administration yeah. is different it it's, is you know it isn't well, bro, well mannered classy it's right. say whatever you feel like saying yep. i don't know i it's, i have a hard time with that Me so too. this is this is a sort of explaining uh, the reason why she said something this is from the new york times um she made it in response to a tweet suggesting that ms jarrett may have had a role in helping mr obama in a scheme mr trump scheme. has branded spygate i know oh, right yeah. scheme just that yeah. just that word a debunked conspiracy. So it's not even, the Spygate isn't even a real thing. It's not, yeah. So she is or, sort of responding to someone um, putting Trump down right. by putting someone who's right. working for Obama down. And I think that's been, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's a common theme. It's forward false information, right. too. It's and fake that's news. A, it's, that's an issue that I have a problem with, particularly yeah. people in the public eye. I mean, right. someone with money, I mean, you could in this world you could sue them for defamation of character or whatever you know so yeah. it's no she and mm -hmm. and and Roseanne Barr has done several things you know she she had an exchange with Chelsea Clinton after she referred to Ms. Clinton as Chelsea Soros Clinton which is a reference to George Soros who is a billionaire liberal donor you know, yeah. so he donated to the Clintons, yeah. and she's putting the Clintons down. Right. Then she did the the Jared thing, putting Obama down. Yeah. Um, then uh, the woman who used to work on the show, Wanda Sykes, yes. quit the show. <gasps> See so, what I'm saying? I have to tell you, I was at the Wanda Sykes uh, when they did the comedy event for Cam oh. Neely. I was at that oh. at the Fleet Center, and we what saw. What was the we, date? I don't remember. It was Reese. right before the election, so yeah, it was, it was yeah. October, right yeah. before the election, and yeah. it was, it was awful. And I mean, like people were booed. I mean, and we actually talked to Wanda Sykes in a bar afterwards. Me and my uncle. Cool. Yeah, and we were like, we're so sorry, we were embarrassed, and, and my friends are staunch. Why were they booing her? Well, oh, we the it guy, the, the comedian. No, the comedian came up before and just really slandered black people and was super racist in the fleet center and like just went off and like the whole crowd i mean you know the size of the crowd there and then wanda sykes ended up walking off stage because they were saying stuff the people in the crowd were, oh. i ne i could not i did not know about that. i i was that was one of the most uncomfortable situations i've been oh, in and i was man. just like oh my god and I, I mean, it just really, and I think that that mm. behavior of that comedian prior, and I don't even remember his name, prior to Wanda Is he Sykes, a Boston? Is he a Boston? He's a Boston comedian. So some of those Boston comedians have that edge yeah, to that them. old Boston. Which is too bad. Yeah, but it, I, and, and you pay, it, not but it like was a Jimmy benefit. Not like Tingle, he, no, he ran for, he wouldn't be. Yeah, that. yeah that, I'm so sorry. It's sad. Yeah, but that it's was badly sad. representing right. Boston. Right, and it was right before the election, and but, but I think it comes off the cusp. 
I mean, I was embarrassed for my city. I of mean, course. I love Boston. And no, I'm, you know, I, I, I really feel that we, you know, we do a lot of things first and we try to, we're thoughtful, we're, you know, like we're responsible, fiscally responsible, but also we, we respect awful. human rights, but that, you so know, the but other go thing ahead. Yeah, I want to say, I, so part of this is also um, President Tr Trump responded to the fury over Roseanne, yeah. but not to her racist comments. Right. And so, that's typical. Yeah. Right. So he's not uh, making enough of a statement well, about, you know, the egregious damage right. that she had. Well, like when he made the statement about yeah. um, oh, right. when the neo-Nazis were marching alongside. Right. 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 You know, I, I was like, wow. And, and I mean, it's, th there is such a thing mm -hmm. as hate crime. I mean, like if there were Muslims out on the streets saying, no, Americans, Americans must, you know, die or white people must die or whatever, I, I'm sure that would have a different connotation. But I mean, that that's a really... You know, I come from a part of the country that there were a lot of white supremacists in in Idaho, and it was, and there weren't a lot of people of color there. A lot of different, not very many nationalities. And to me, I just felt it was so wrong to have the audacity to think you're better than someone exactly. because the way they we're look, created or equal. where they're born, or, or yep. their religious practices. Well, and that's in our, and that's what is the freedom of speech. Exactly, I was just going to yeah, say so all men kind are created a, equal, yeah. and be, and. You know, if you take off the outer covering, we're all exactly the same. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. It is. Um, Samantha, yeah, I'm sorry, ahead. Kelly no, Sadler yeah. joked about McCain's health. She has left the White House yeah. as of this week. Yep. Uh, yesterday. Yeah. The, or the day before. Restructuring of White House communications shop began in earnest on Tuesday, yesterday, when Kelly Sadler, communications aide who came under fire for a flippant comment about Senator John McCain's health, was let go. Yeah. According to two administration officials. So good for them. Yep. Kudos yep. to say we can't. We can't. Yeah. So, so I think where people are paying better line? attention yeah. now because they're seeing that. This isn't just a random, off-the-edge person. Right. This is becoming more common. It is. And that's not okay. So people are starting to now pull in that, you know, well, rain a little bit. Well, we've had this discussion a lot. I think yeah. this is what's dividing our country. We need to start looking at, you know, and I find myself getting angry when I hear stuff like this. And then, yeah. you know, but we all, I think, have to look at each other the same and say we're all human beings. We all share this earth of course. together. And, and why not work as a team to make it better? Exactly. Why are we fighting? Fight, yeah. Yeah, like why are we degrading each other? Why are we, you know, it, it, to me it just, it, it, it's awful. it makes no sense. Her, so the quote, uh, the particular thing, she joked last month during a closed door meeting at the White House that McCain's opposition to Gina Haspel's nomination to yep. lead the CIA didn't matter because, he's, quote, he's dying anyway, yeah. unquote. Um, he has been a public servant. Yeah. He was in an army, you know, enemy war camp. Yeah. He was in POW. Well, Trump he s degraded him on that. Exactly. He I said mean, he was not a hero. He was in a war. Yeah, but but P.S. Trump didn't even go to war. Yeah, he, he got had bones off. First. His daddy <laughs> got him off or he had whatever. Bones first. Yeah. So <laughs> McCain has an aggressive form of yeah. brain cancer. Receiving treatment in Arizona has not appeared in the Senate this year. And truly, when he does speak, yeah. you can tell That's he awful. is a true American, yeah. wants what's best for the country, yeah. doesn't have his own personal agenda his you know yeah. his well I don't want to go there but anyway um, and the but other person the I had part, he's, 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 he's been, fabulous no I, I was going to keep talking about policy. some things that Trump oh. does oh, that yeah. are not okay yeah um, so John Stewart came to the defense of Samantha B Samantha B was the one who was commenting about the, where, Vol, uh, uh, Ivanka Trump oh it, that was a oh Samantha wasn't so she, she was the a one comedian that was at the White House press it, yeah, yes. Yeah. No? Oh. <laughs> she was... It was another situation. That, I forget her name. Oh, this yeah. This is... Yeah. Um, she was speaking at something uh, full frontal. So it's part of... Her, it's her TV show. Yeah. She was talking about um, Ivanka in a rude uh, word used to refer to women. Uh, Start to the C. Yeah. And... Um, so she appeared on The Daily Show with Stewart. So Stewart knew her personally. She apologized yeah. that she used this vulgarity to complain about, you know, she was doing a monologue about yeah. a photograph 
with her daughter, which actually was a beautiful photograph. I looked at this beautiful photograph, yeah. and then this comedian is yeah, doing this, this thing. Yeah. Uh, so then Samantha P. B. apologized, said, um, and, and uh, you know, so I think We make errors. I mean, there is errors that are made, and yep, I think and it's commendable that she apologized. Exactly. She went publicly. She said it's inexcusable, inappropriate. I crossed the line. I deeply regret it. Yep. Regret it. You know, and so I think... Really, what's happening is the, there are definitely inappropriate things being said yep. that that you shouldn't say, even if you have the freedom right. to say them, right. because it's 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 right. like a it's, hurtful. it's like a verbal abuse. Yeah, it is. You know, you're, you're hurting someone. You're slapping them in the face, particularly publicly, because it happens right. over when it happens publicly. It's right. something that gets replayed over and over. Think of you know. Trump's bad statements, other people's bad statements that have sure. come up. It's on film. Yeah, and it's over. It's it's cyberbullying. Yeah, all of that. I mean, like, I mean, like, if if a child in school kept saying something about another child Absolutely. on Facebook and kept playing or Instagram or on the playground, yeah. they'd be in the principal's yeah. office immediately. So why aren't us as adults kind of held somewhat right. accountable? I mean, there's a right. there's a fine line between free speech and really a crime. I mean, like if, I think you, you, you know what I mean? That's, I mean, verbal abuse. I mean, people get divorced over things like that. People, you know, kids have emotional damage from parents saying mean things to right, them. Right, right. You know, and aren't we better than that? This, you know, Well, like, as a country, we should as be. As people, just. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Aren't so, we better than that? Right. I mean, like, that's, that's the thing that really bothers me is, like, right. you have to, and I have very strong opinions, but I'm, I would never call I would never call Ivan, you know, no. Ivanka that name or right. anybody for that no. matter. No, yeah, it doesn't even. But it, it just, you know, like that, that comes to a point, like when you you have to, and it's unfortunate because I think our political climate, there's so much like agreed, anger, divisiveness, back and forth. yeah, disrespect, disrespect. Mm -hmm. And it's I see comedy because I like comedy and things like that, but you do have to. There's a difference between making fun of th something and, and, and tongue in cheek and roasting somebody and being cruel. and that's done affectionately. Yeah, um, but this is right. in poor taste. It, there's nothing positive about it. Right. It's meant to hurt them, divide, to hurt, to put down, to laugh cruelly. Yes, at at. Uh, an observation that isn't even valid, right? But he, it shouldn't even be said. And you, right? And you, you know, have, you have to ask yourself. So, if your kid said this, or your kid heard, overheard someone say that, what would you say to that child? Oh, that's that's okay. It's free speech, right? And actually, <laughs> thinking about that, free speech in this case, that isn't free speech. There is a cost, yes, to what they're saying. There is. So, the people, you know, the, Roseanne is paying. For yep. her, for her speaking, yep. you know all of the things that she has said. It so is. we are out of time. Yep. Um, we will see you next week, yep. same time, same bat channel.